Yeah, this is uh, it's Mark Laurie, Mike Zero, Juliet Charlie Foxtrot, Mike Zero, Juliet Charlie Foxtrot using the Yasu FT seven five seven GX and uh, the long wire. Yeah, Roger, mate, you're five and nine plus ten with me, and um, I had to tune up to your frequency. I've got you on one nine zero five decimal five. Yeah, Roger, mate. Well, you're sounding good. Modulation's good. Uh, quite trebly, as you would expect with that old valve gear. But, uh, yeah, I'm using, for the first time, I'm using the uh, Yaesu 757GX. And uh, just, uh, you know, just I've just had it all realigned and a load of diodes replaced in it. And that's, I'm quite happy with it. But how was your holiday, uh, Laurie? Back to you. Yeah, G4 FAA, M0 JCF. I'll just put a call out. If anyone would like to join the uh, Cray Valley first Monday of the month top band net, uh, we're listening on this frequency a little bit higher than we expected, but uh, we're just compensating for Laurie's valves. But uh, if anyone would like to uh, join in, we'll leave a pause. And if you could call in M0 JCF in company with G4 FAA. Oh, very good evening, Frank. Uh, G3 WMR uh, in company with uh, G4 FAA. This is M0 JCF. Yeah, well, I'm showing um, one decimal nine zero five decimal five. You're showing just a little bit lower than that. And Laurie could be absolutely anywhere. Basically, I came up to um, Laurie's voice uh, when we first joined. But how are you doing, Frank? Looking forward to G0 VJG's um, exploits. Um, 
Busby, and he'll tell us the, the real story of what happened there in particular, uh, the drama of uh, rescuing his mate before he drowned. <laughs> well, there we go. Right, with the pause then, I'll pass it back to you, Mark. M0 JTF to take, call for Foxtrot Alpha Alpha, over. Yeah, with a pause to see if anyone wanted to join the uh, Cray Valley uh, Radio Society. Uh, first Monday of the month, Top Man Net. Yeah, well, thanks for that, um, uh, 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 Laurie. Sorry, I nearly called you a Frank then, Laurie. Yeah, um, uh, I I'm interested as well. As I say, I heard... Um, I heard um, when, it, when he was on the rock transmitting, I heard him. And then, of course, we was expecting him to go back, weren't we, to do um, a last blast effort. And, of course, it all went a little bit wrong. But I'm glad that everyone's, like, safe and sound. Um, I have, like, looked and read up on Rockall. And uh, <laughs> I, I don't ever want to go there. I've got to say that. It don't, it don't um, suit my lifestyle. A tiny pointed rock in the middle of the sea covered in bird droppings and uh, a, a gale force winds blowing all around you constantly no I don't fancy that I could see why people do it but uh, maybe if I was 20 years younger or even more you know I'd be gung ho for it but um, yeah uh, I, I give you 11 out of 10 to Nobby, Cam and um, uh, everyone who was around including like the seamen who obviously got them out there and got them off the boat and got them back on the boat that in itself is a feat, isn't it? Because it's not like they could just step off the boat onto a nice beach or anything. I mean, they had to step off onto a cliff face, basically. But, uh, yeah, Frank, um, I I'll give you the reports again. Uh, Laurie, you're 5 and 9 plus 20 now. And, um, Frank, you was uh, 5 and 9 plus 10, sometimes knocking on plus 20. And like you, Frank, I've got Santiago 9 um, noise floor. Um, I'll be surprised if we're being heard uh, via the skip, because obviously we're still, um, we've still got over an hour's worth of daylight to go. So there's still some delay there to uh, stop our signal coming um, anywhere uh, back down but um, I, I haven't got I'm in the garage and I haven't got the internet in here so I can't check Hat Green or anything like that so I'm relying on Laurie and uh, the, one of the reasons I'm waffling with the long over is to uh, give Laurie a chance uh, to um, uh, yeah, to see if he can hear me uh, genuinely because he wasn't sure. Uh, one got a question for you, Laurie. If you're going to um, uh, Cray Valley on Thursday, um, I will bring, if that's okay, I'll bring you some more valves. And if you could uh, bring me and my workers back, and uh, we can go from there. That's if you've got the time, of course, um, or you, you remember. But, yeah, if you want to bring uh, those valves back to me, and then um, I'll drop my next batch off to you. All B9A again. And what I'm going to do is going to go through them all, uh, shove them your way, and uh, then after that it will be octals, tools, and different heater voltages, etc. I'll have to start going through them uh, this summer. So uh, with that, I'll pass it round to you now, Frank. G3 WMR, this is M0 JCF in the group with G4FAA. Yeah, from G3 WMR. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's I'm, on, I'm back on the hand mic tonight <coughs> to see if there's any hum, but I have had an aerial change round in that um, I no longer have the same balance, or I was using it as an anon rather than a balance, um, the, the, um, the device, I shall call it, the, where the, uh, the coax meets the, the aerial. The aerial is still a helically wound fishing rod about um, 18 feet high. I keep meaning to wind it onto, onto a longer one to if it works any better, but I'm still on about the 18 footer. Um, and there's an earth mat as well, or an earth um, system. 
Yeah, and a long enough pause there for somebody to come in. I think it's going to be us three, don't you? Uh, I um, I, I I know when whenever a, a guy has done that, he's disappeared on holiday or he's got something to do on a uh, Monday evening. Um, I always find that the top band net never gets as popular. Um, a couple of times I've taken it on board. I think there was once it was just me and Dav, and we spent an hour. Uh, chewing the fat and uh yeah i mean you know a two-man net is it a net or is it just a normal qso i don't know but when you attach a club um reference to it like cvrs i suppose it is a net it's just a bit of a failed net isn't it but uh, thanks for doing those valves yeah as i say i was going to come down to you um when um you said you was going to be back off your holiday. Then I thought, do you know what? Rather than do that, I'll just wait until you're next at the club because I'm in no rush to get them back as as such. But obviously, uh, as you say, it's going to take a while to go through them all. As I say, you know, I'm, I'm always happy uh, to do it myself, you know, but I know people don't like to really uh, let a test gear go. But uh, that's quite understandable. Um, as I say, you never know if you're going to get it back in one piece. But uh, it's interesting as well. Um, I've got a uh, sitting right next to me now. I've got um, a KW um, 2000. It's the duck egg blue one. And I'm um, I'm going to be getting into that sometime this summer. I'd like to get it um, up and running for the winter. But um, it's uh, it's getting round to it. I'm, I'm gradually offloading at the moment some of my older radios. And um, I'm also getting on with a restoration of some of them. But, you know, it's a slow old process. I'm, I mean, you, you old hands at this, you, you know what it's like. But uh, we'll get there. Slowly, slowly, catchy monkey. I've got two um, hybrids uh, that need to be done. I've got uh, two TS520SEs. I've got my Swan 350 and a Swan 400 that um, I need to restore. And I've also got the FL100B and the FR100B summer camps, which are, of course, the um, the summer camp licensed versions of the Yesus from the 60s. So I've got those. And then uh, the Kodar 85s that I've been saying for three or four years now that I'm going to finish off. And uh, I should really get them all going because, you know, especially with the winter months coming, it'd be nice to be able to get on top band and 80 metres as I am and see if I can work some distance with them but uh, we'll see I've got lots of other old receivers and stuff as well that need my attention so um, and also homebrew stuff that I haven't finished that has been ongoing for a long time so I really do need to get my finger out but um sporadic e seems to have popped up as well the last couple of weeks uh not as many countries as i would like uh, for, uh, per session but it seems to be now daily i'm getting spain italy germany no problems uh get, been getting some scandinavian stuff um sometimes holland you know i've had uh, the uk well i've had scotland and uh wales have come through on sporadic e um <coughs> eastern europe's been a bit quiet on the sporadic e um you know the usual suspects out of places like slovenia 
and uh, those you know the higher power stations just haven't heard them this year so far as i say i've worked about eight different countries on the sporadic e so far but uh, generally they seem to be the same every day it seems to be spain and of course italy it's, there's all you can never have sporadic e without italy with a smattering of germany france uh, some switzerland and uh, as i say some scandinavia but not you know everywhere i think um the furthest uh, northeast i've got is lithuania and uh, that was just uh, last week there was a lithuanian station he's on quite often but yeah the sporadic here is a bit i say it's been late this year uh, to sort of pick up and then there's been a bit uh, a bit short on the ground um the radio that i'm using at the moment i think i've uh, mentioned it possibly before but i bought it a few weeks ago on ebay the uh, yesu ft 757 gx bought it on ebay paid 190 pounds for it obviously i bought it blind um it was a little bit off frequency it was a little bit deaf um, they do have known problems, uh, especially with something this old. And so uh, there's a big bucket load of um, uh, diodes were replaced. Now, there's a, a chap called Rob down in uh, near Gillingham. And in the end, I threw it his way. And uh, I say, in, with uh, replacing diodes, uh, realigning, uh, setting it all up so that it was all on frequency, producing about 110 watts uh, maximum power, and uh, also uh, found some dry solder joints, that sort of thing. So uh, all in all, he put in a, a lot of time and effort on it. But um, he's trustworthy. He's very good. And um, he, he's uh, he's worked on uh, one of my 757s before. And as I say, this is the first time I've used it on top band. So I'm quite happy with the results. Uh, looking at the carrier, or not the carrier, but the peak, putting about 35 watts, I suppose. So yeah, we are a couple of watts over. But given the um, transmission line and then the fact that I'm using just a, a 27 meter or uh, 87 foot, uh, 90 foot long wire, um, you know, it's uh, is no great surprising if I if I was putting out ten watts ERP, I don't know, but uh, yeah, that's a load of old waffle about what I've been up to or what I'm not doing, what I should be doing, and all the rest of it. So round to you there, Frank. Oh, Frank, by the way, um, uh, your uh, buzz can't see any trace of it from my end, and in fact, your modulation is very good indeed. Um, it, it's nice and loud, nice and crisp and um uh you know th th there's no fault in it compared to how it has been in the past and laurie uh, you've drifted just slightly um about 100 hertz that's all so um i just compensated for that while you was talking so if anyone's noticed that i'm off frequency it's because i nudged the uh, vfo just to listen to laurie and i forgot to nudge it back up again so round to you frank g3 wmr this is m m0 j ACF in the group with G4FAA. Yeah, that's just a pause. In case there's anyone else, hey, good luck. I always had to turn up to, to 1910 to make sure there wasn't a, a parallel net running up there. Um, from G3 WMR returning to <coughs> JCF and G4FAA. Uh, Right, I'm, I'm glad my, my signal doesn't have the hum anymore. It, it was weird. Um, it, it was uh, definitely, a, definitely an, earth, an earth problem in, in the shack. Uh, let me go back on the speaker. Yeah, interesting about the, the um, sporadic E, Mark. Um, I, I've not... I listened too early in the season and there wasn't any. Also, I, I, I've, I've had a, a theory for many years that when there's high pressure around, like when Nobby was in, in Rockall, you don't seem to get sporadic E. It, it, um, it doesn't seem to be as much to do with the, the, the summer, the summer um, sun altitude and, and things like that. It seems to be more to do with with frontal type weather than, uh, than um, high pressure weather. Uh, and when, when there are uh, uh, fronts and thundery showers and things, uh, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if we don't get plenty of sporadic in the next few days with this kind of 
unstable weather. I haven't um, bothered with sporadic heat for, for quite a few years, except um, fairly recently I used to have the FT817, a little three watt rig, in the vehicle using um, a, a two meter uh, and 70 centimetre dual band aerial, which is, it, it was one that was three, three times five eighths waves on, uh, on, um, 70 centimetres and one times five eighths wave on two metres. And that five eighths wave bit on two metres used to match very nicely on, on six metres. So I, I used to have that on on six metres and I, I can remember um, on one particular occasion, driving back from Hastings um, and hearing and working um, sporadic east stations, no problem at all with, with, the, with the lowish power. That was quite impressive. And previous to that, um, I, I used to... Um, Work sporadically when I was. I, I used to. I used to go this time of the year. I for work. I used to go up to Scotland with, with a, a group of um, geography students. And we used to go up to the west coast of Scotland on a on a field course. And it, it used to be possible on sporadic e to, to to work down not not very well down to here. But a bit further, like Cornwall from, from Scotland, Cornwall is about uh, the nearest, if you get good signals. Lon London was uh, pushing it a bit too, a bit too near from, from northwest Scotland. But a bit further south and southwest, it was uh, just about the right range for sporadic E. Plus Europe, of course. But, uh, um, I always like to, to, to try and work some uh, some G stations if possible when when it's uh, when it's sporadic. Never, never managed to work uh, any Channel Island stations from here. Uh, again, too 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 close, I think, for for that sort of skip. Right. Uh, I don't know whether. I'm going to stick around for, for the AM bit simply because um, I suffer a bit too much with the, the um, DS9 noise on, on when we're working AM. Sideband uh, cuts through it, but uh, probably be struggling on AM. But, uh, we'll see what happens. I'm surprised no one else has joined us. Uh, I, hope, I hope they haven't forgotten. But at least, uh, even two, I would say, constitute a net. If, it, if it's a free plan net, Mark, I, I can't see why why two, two shouldn't comprise a net. I, I can't see why not. Anyway, with three of us, definitely. Uh, back round to you, Laurie, if you're, if you're not in the middle of eating something. Uh, G4FAA and the net G3WMR. Sadly, folks, initially, um, uh, you, Mark, if I could see you on, on the uh, Hack Green SDR, uh, um, I, I didn't, wasn't looking when, uh, when Frank WMR came up, but now, um, now you both disappeared, and uh, I couldn't see myself anyway. So there we go. Uh, the propagation is not, uh, uh, it is not particularly brilliant tonight. We have to wait till uh, somebody says until the D layer collapses. Uh, we'll be about 11 o'clock tonight. Okay, uh, a couple of things. Um, do you, do you 
Okay, um, not, uh, I'm not sure. I bought it with the power supply about four or five weeks ago and um, I haven't even powered it up yet. Um, I was going to be cautious with it, uh, Laurie. I was going to check out the power supply first. Um, it looks, looking in the back of it, I can see a big old green capacitor, obviously a big can with multiple capacitors in it. So I really wanted to check the power supply first maybe do an ESR check on the caps and make sure that the transformer isn't um, shorted out or anything. I, I suspect it's all going to be okay. And then I was, as I say, going to be cautious and I was going to power it up slowly. So it's not, I, I haven't gone over it enough yet to be confident that I want to apply 240 volts to it. Back to you. Yes, I have. I've got a few Variacs. I'm hoping that they're big enough. They've got the uh, capability. Um, I'll have to double check uh, the spec. I haven't used one of my, or either of my Variacs for a, a few years now. But um, yeah, they are only small ones. But um, I've used them on radios before and uh, they haven't been a problem. And that, that's how I'm going to do it anyway. Thank you. 
Yeah, G4 FAA, M0 JCF. I have to keep remembering not to use the Romeo anymore uh, in the group with G3 WMO. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to give um, AM a go. It'll be the first time that I've used AM on this radio as well. So we'll, we'll actually see if it works from my end. Uh, with the sporadic E, um, answering Frank, um, I've had, you know, like Southern Ireland, etc., on sporadic E, Northern Island, and um, I have had the West Country, and I, I, I and once I was talking to someone in Hampshire. Now we knew it wasn't ground wave because we was um, we we was both nine plus to each other, and uh, there was a strong fade as well. So you know it was dropping three, four, five s points. So we just assumed it was backscatter off of um, a cloud over Europe, and I think so. Sporadic E, I think, is possible with uh, you know short distances but you're actually banging off the back or the side of a cloud um uh, sort of you know like uh, hundreds of miles away so i think that's how you work um some sporadic e distance but you're quite a close station and you know it can't be ground wave you know on, unless on 10 meters um also, I'll tell you who I do take notice of, uh, Frank, is uh, Jim Bacon, uh, G3... Oh, I can't remember his call sign off the top of my head. But, you know, Jim Bacon, the BBC weatherman of um, of a long time ago. And um, he does... Uh, he's got a website called Prop Quest, And he does a daily blog during uh, sporadic e-season and uh, predicts, you know, when, where, how and why and maybes... And and um, yeah, he, he associates a lot of sporadic E with very high level um, winds, such as, you know, uh, jet streams, etc. So he goes on about all the different jet streams over, you know, across the Atlantic and over Europe and uh, how they sort of affect the sporadic E. And his predictions are normally quite good. But um, so you might be quite right, you know, the, the high pressure that we're uh, got moving across at the moment with several weather fronts coming in from the west, that could have been influenced in the last couple of days. And as I say, you know, it does come in fits and starts, as we know, that's the that's the nature of sporadic uh, um, E layer. You know, uh, the clouds can be big, small, fast, slow thick thin can't they you know and as i say uh with their altitude uh with the e-layer altitude yeah it's quite possible it's influenced by uh various things such as wind shear as well so uh, yeah it's a it's a very fascinating subject and i suppose if you're into meteorology as well then it's quite good um as for vhf sporadic e i don't believe that I've worked any uh, sporadic E above 10 metres. Oh, no, sorry, I have 6 metres. I've certainly not worked any on 4 metres, and I don't believe I've worked it 2 metres. Uh, my best distance for 2 metres is from here in Sidcup to um, uh, somewhere in Sweden. It was about 1,200 kilometres, and uh, that was with uh, 25 watts into a 5-element beam. Uh, beaming that way that's my best distance uh on two meters but of course that was tropo during a lift okay then well we'll leave it at that then if um if frank if, i'm not sure if you're going to be listening or if we will you know we'll listen for you trying to call in i will hand it round to you on am but uh yeah if, um uh laurie if you want to go on to am now i'm going to run key I'm going to uh, switch around to AM and then just uh, check the power level and knock back the carrier if I have to. Uh, G4 FAA M0 JCF in the group with G3 WMR uh, switching to AM. Yeah, Roger, Roger. From, from 
Foxtrot Alpha Alpha, uh, G4 Foxtrot Alpha Alpha, apologies, G4 Foxtrot Alpha Alpha, this is Mike Zero, Juliet Charlie Fox, your report 5 and 9 plus 10, uh, 5 and 9 plus 20, and um, audio quality, uh, very good considering, uh, Laurie, back to you. Yeah, goal four, Fox for Alpha Alpha, Mike Zero, Juliet, Charlie Fox. Well, I say you was nice and clear. Uh, yeah, uh, the, the noise is pretty bad this evening on AM on this particular radio. Um, but uh, yeah, when you, uh, when you knocked your carrier back and um, you become sort of, I would say about a four, about a four and nine. And then when you, I think you might have knocked it back further, you was unreadable, Laurie. And then when you come back up, you was back as it should be. G4 FAA M0 JCF. G4 FAA M0 JCF. Yeah, as I say, it was uh, when you was on uh, sidebands. Um, it was really quite nice to listen to uh, the AM this evening. It's just not a pleasure to listen to. Uh, just one second, um, uh, uh, Laurie. Let's just see if Frank did follow us and if he's going to attempt it. A uh, G3 WMR. This is M0 JCF uh, with G4 FAA in the Cray Valley Top Band Net AM. M. Yeah, Tom G3 WMR. Am I transmitting? Looks like it. Yeah, um, you're both nice signals. Uh, Lorry is 40 over 9, and you, Mark, at 20 over 9. But um, both uh, a bit sort of phasey sounding. Um, not, not as easy listening as, as on SSB. Uh, so that, that's, that's my report uh, from G3 WMR. Yeah, G3, WMR, M0, JCF in the group. Actually, you sound uh, re really uh, better than um, Laurie, uh, uh, Frank. And I don't mean that in a detrimental way. Um, definitely, you um, you sound, you sound uh, I say, better than, than Laurie does audio-wise. But your signal, about plus 20 to me. And uh, But yeah, I, I've, um, I, I don't see any problems, uh, given the, you know, the, the circumstances with 
with QR Mexico and that. I'll just see if uh, Laurie is uh, receiving you and if he can give you a report back. Laurie, to you, G4FAA. This is M0 JCF with G3 WMR in the Cray Valley AM net. Yeah, G4 FIA M0 JCF with G3 WMR. Okay, Laurie. Yeah, well, thanks for joining the net anyway. Um, it was, you know, it was interesting. I was particularly interested in getting on the net this week, regardless, because as I say, it was the first time that I'd used this Yasu 757 GX on um, 160 meters. And of course, it's the first time I've used the AM as well. So uh, it was nice to actually confirm that the AM works etc uh, one last passing thought um, Laurie my KW2000 is just LSB and USB uh, there's there's not even a CW on it um, let alone AM would that be correct or um, have, I, have I got a dodgy one back to you
Yeah, G3WMRM0JCF in the group. Okay, chaps, well, it's great of you both to come on. As I say, uh, it, it was nice just to try this radio out, both top band and um, uh, AM. So I'm happy with uh, the results of both. Uh, particularly horrendous noise on um, the top band this evening as well, compared to other weeks. But then it could just be the radio as well. I uh, wish you both uh, very best evening and uh, the rest of the week. And I'll catch up with you most likely on Thursday. And it'll uh, be interesting to listen to Nobby. And yes, uh, I will do some valve swaps as well, Laurie. So uh, thank you again for that. Okay, this is M0JCF with uh, G4FIA, G3WMR. In the Cray Valley, first Monday of the month, top band net uh, going QRT. This frequency is clear for use this frequency is clear for use